It's giving like quiet luxury. Like she's very understated. Beautiful. She's got a little bit of edge with the fragments of basil. She's got layers. I would guzzle this, but I want to savor it too. My name is Cheyenne and this is the Mocktail Moods channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make the easiest mocktail possibly ever. It's three ingredients by the time it all comes together and the flavors and complexity that it delivers make it feel like a true craft cocktail. So when I'm developing my mocktail recipes, when I'm tasting them, the first thing I think is, does it set the scene? Does it add to the vibe? Could I see myself out ordering and paying for this? If the answer is not yes across the board, I'm definitely not sharing it and posting it here. I really like drinks that kind of take you somewhere, bring you on a journey, whether it's in your palate or in your mind. I just like things that taste really fresh and delicious. This drink that we're gonna make today checks all those boxes. And I kind of went into the process making it complicated for myself. I distilled the idea Idea, pun intended, and landed on the drink that we're gonna make today. I am using something new. It is called Giffard's Elderflower Liqueur. It is a non-alcoholic liqueur. It's from a French company that started in 1885, so they have been around for a long time, and they specialize in making liqueurs and alcohols that are really bartender friendly. So if you notice the size of this bottle, the shape of it, it's really easy to set on a rack, to grab, to use, and to utilize while you're making drinks in a restaurant or a bar. I am doing neither of those things, but it is nice to have this nice long bottle. I do like the feel of it, it has great design, and it does taste delicious. So according to my research, about a year ago, Giffard, and I hope I'm saying that right, Giffard, Giffard, it's French, Giffard, I don't know, but, about a year ago, they released their line of alcohol-free liqueurs. There is grapefruit, pineapple, ginger, and the elderflower. It has a really beautiful golden color. The aroma is very lychee forward. It's really bright. It has a little bit of sweetness to it, but not that cloying floral sweetness. It just smells like it's gonna taste really good, which it does. Let's make our drink. So first you're gonna grab your shaker. P.S. I got a new one. If you've been watching my videos, isn't it so much better? You can see what I'm doing versus the other metal one. Rest in peace. I will use you sometimes, but this is superior. We're going to add three ounces of the elderflower liqueur right into our shaker. Now, the great thing about this recipe and a lot of recipes on my channel, you could use regular alcohol and make these drinks. Just replace the spirits with the alcoholic versions and I bet it would taste amazing. So find elderflower liqueur that's alcoholic if that's your jam and make the same thing. Let me know how it tastes. Next up, we're adding a handful or this little bowl full of fresh basil leaves. I really wanted the basil flavor to really punch forward and stand out in the drink. So I'm using this much, it's about a handful. Use your discretion. If you like basil, go for it. If you're unsure, start off with a little and then build from there. You can always change things. That is the beauty of making your own drinks at home. So now we're gonna muddle the basil leaves in the elderflower liqueur. You don't have to go crazy. You don't need to go ham. You just wanna break it up to release the oils and the essence. And we're also gonna shake it with ice. So there's plenty of room for things to infuse and mix around. What I do want to happen is to break up some of the basil leaves so that the color and flex come through when we strain it. There will be little pieces of it that make the drink really beautiful. Those are the primary ingredients. I'm gonna grab some ice for shaking and my glass and fresh ice for serving. Here's our serving glass. This glass has been in my cabinet since forever and I've never used it in one of my videos. It's just a simple, clean, beautiful glass. And I'm using my globe ice today. Here's ice for shaking. So the other great thing about my new shaker is my hands don't get cold because it's glass. So I don't actually need my shaking towel that I usually grab, but I have it here just in case I need it. Lock up the shaker and give it a good mix for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Get everything nice and infused. Then we're gonna strain it, pour it, and drink it. Voila. Okay, nice and foamy. You can kind of smell it through the shaker. It looks fantastic in this glass. It's giving mojito, but it's so much better than a mojito. No offense if you like mojitos. I knew I was gonna need the towel. I can't get this off. Okay, 
I guess the towel's with me in my process forever. Let's pour. You can see there's some pieces of basil in the drink. It's super subtle. It doesn't overtake it, but it's kind of interesting. It's not just a clear liquid. There's some dimension to it. So you've got the base of your drink in. All we're gonna do is top it with some sparkling water and then garnish with a fresh basil leaf. Look at that. It's beautiful, it's artisanal. It looks very drinkable. Let's try it. It's simple, it's fresh, it's clean. And from a process perspective, above all, it's so easy. Like that took no time, very little effort. And it really is just all about sourcing the ingredients and then putting it all together. And you can even add your own twist to it. Sometimes I'll make my recipes and I'm like, oh, that one's good. I have to drink like two of those over the next couple days as I'm filming. And sometimes I'm not in the mood to film and I'm not in the mood to like have a mocktail at that very second. But with this drink, it's kind of the thing, kind of like my hemp infused mocktails. I will drink them always just cause I love the way they taste and they're so light and they feel really sophisticated and elevated. This drink reminds me of this amazing ginger spritz that I used to make. Back in my days of drinking alcohol, I used to make it in the summer and it was just like the drink for the rotation. My friends would come over, I live in New York, we went to the roof and had these ginger spritzes all day. I see this kind of taking that one's place because it is so great and light and it kind of feels like summer. Spring is around the corner here in New York. So I'm just starting to set the mood, get in the zone and prep for the warmer weather that's coming. Since you're still here with me, don't forget to like and subscribe. I post a new video every single week, either sharing a new recipe or a drink review or talking about something in the alcohol-free drink space. If you're looking for recipes that are similar to this one, that are packed with flavor and really simple to put together, there's a lemon pepper, hemp-infused mocktail, as well as a sparkling blood orange mocktail. Those will be coming up in a second. As always, thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.